At the dawn of the third millennium, the people of the Latin American continent have few reasons to rejoice. South America suffers one of the worst crises of its history. The politicians and the econo economists find themselves helpless before the frustrations and disillusions of millions of people who continue to become poorer and poorer. Brazil. The immense country of 150 million inhabitants is a true reflection of the Latin American reality. While 2% of the population owns 58% of land, 12 million peasants lost their land, robbed by the big landowners. Thus the rich always become richer and the poor all the more poorer. In the summer of 1968, two young Claritian priests, Pedro Casadalaga and Manuel Luzon, came from Spain to the region of Aranguilla. Inhabitants of that area were originally an indigenous people but slowly, farmers had come from the northeast, looking for land to cultivate. Then there had followed the big landowners. Two years after his arrival, Pedro Casadalaga was consecrated bishop of the region. On the day of his consecration, he took upon himself the defence of the poor, the indigenous and the landless. Bishop and poet, defender of the poor and denouncer of injustice and oppression, he was defamed, persecuted. Let us listen to his words. I was born in Spain, Catalonia, near Manresa and Berga. From childhood, I felt the call to priesthood to the Claritian life, to be a son of Mary. Always with an aspiration to go to the missions in the third world. An aspiration which was only realized when I was 40. Sufficiently mature now. These 22 years in Mato Grosso in Amazonia, in Brazil, my second homeland, undoubtedly have been a gift of God. A kind of sacrament of reality on the one hand, and sacrament of martyrdom on the other. A sacrament of suffering, sacrament of the struggle of the people, and sacrament of liberation. And here I am, an old horse, so to say. Pedro, I've been living with you these days. I've seen the poverty and austerity in which you and your companions live. For example, you always use public transportation. You do not have your own vehicle. You live in quarters. You make your own food, wash your clothes. Is it all a show? Or is it a sign that you want to live and share the life of your people? When the television or journalists capture our activities, they seem to be theatrical gestures. In fact, we are doing nothing special. It is a pity. What should be normal 
seems to be extraordinary. Someone has said that the third world is a big concentration camp. What do you say about it? Not only an immense camp of concentration. It is not just an immense concentration camp, but it is also a camp of forced labour at the service of the first world. We are deceiving ourselves to think that our present world with its techniques and progress is better than yesterday. There is a first world because there is a third world. The first world needs the third world. The reality of the third world is a crucial point for Christianity. The poor remind us that faith without works is dead. Faith without justice and charity is mere ritualism, a mime, a mime to calm the consciences by ritual prayers. Do you think that Christian faith can remain indifferent to such a situation of structural injustice? Jesus was not neutral, for that he died a martyr. Jesus was not neutral before the law, the temple, the empire. This is not to say that Jesus was only a politician. In our world everything is political, although polit politics is not everything. Evidently, Christian faith cannot be neutral. We have to struggle, to struggle that all are assured basic human rights. By justice and right, we have to opt for equitable and a just distribution. The church in Latin America opted for the poor. It is a church of martyrs. We know the words of Jesus give life to those whom we love. If a church has no martyrs, it is not a church of Christ. This church is collectively martyrum. To conclude, I would like to recall his comment to the young. To be young and to be pessimist is a contradiction. To be human and to doubt about life is suicide. To be a Christian and not to have hope is to deny one's faith. I remember him thus, a man of faith, a bishop in search of the utopia of the kingdom of God, a bishop truly poor truly committed to the youth, exposed to martyrdom for the cause of Jesus and the cause of the poor. Mm -hmm.